full Nostarius story from uh, Nano Nost. So, boys, if you want to check this out, as I said, we'll leave a link. But uh, yeah, let's check out the vid. So, for those that don't know me, I'm Nano. I was part of the Nostarius core team. One Actually, let's start from the beginning. Hold up. Let's go again. It's been five years since Nostarius shut down its vanilla law private server. And I think it's finally about time to talk about the reasons why. What happened behind the scenes? Why didn't Nostarius shut down? How did the Blizzard meeting go? And how this all eventually led to Classic. So let's go. So for those that don't know me, I'm Nano. I was part of the Nostalrius core team, one of the five people who helped to lead the Nostalrius project. And if you're not familiar with what Nostalrius is, well, I'm going to let somebody you're probably a little bit more familiar with explain it for me. Today, we're going to be talking about Nostalrius. Now, uh, if you guys don't know what Nostalrius is, it's a vanilla WoW private server, which means that it's not hosted by Blizzard, it's not owned by Blizzard, and it's also not condoned by Blizzard. It's you're probably wondering what made Nostalrius different from the hundreds, potentially, of the other private servers that have existed. Well, the number one thing and the biggest thing that comes in the world of MMOs in general is, do you have players? And Nostalrius certainly did. At the one-year mark of our server, we had over 130,000 active accounts. That means accounts Ooh. that have logged in once during that month prior and capped at 13,100 concurrent players on the server on a single server at a single time. We had over 2 million characters created in total over the course of that one-year mark in the Star Wars Legacy. And for those who are really interested about what level of our GM work went into running a server of this size? Take a look at these numbers. An absolutely staggering amount of people decide they want to spend their time on Nostalrius. And so why would they do this? What was it about Nostalrius that brought people back to playing this game, going out of their way and playing a quote-unquote illegal version of World of Warcraft? Well, many at that time had felt that the retail version had stepped away from the core values of what made an MMO, and they wanted to try again to capture the magic that existed in Vanilla WoW, and they sought it out with Nostalrius. So then why did it shut down? Well, as our friend Asmin mentioned, private servers aren't exactly legal. We didn't have a right to run a server using Blizzard's copyrighted material of World of Warcraft. Technically, it's even against the terms of service, so they could have banned us from our retail accounts had they chosen to. You tweet out? Sweet. But why did we shut down? There's plenty of private servers that keep on running. They get cease and desist orders from Blizzard and Blizzard's lawyers all the time. So what made Nostalrius different than the other dozens of private servers that ignored Blizzard? Well, we had a mission in mind. We created Nostalrius because we wanted players to have a place, a home that they could live and experience classic all over again. And... We saw an opportunity with our massive player base to put into movement a mission to have Blizzard officially make their own version of WoW Vanilla. Now, we weren't the first people to come up with this idea of legacy servers, Blizzard-run legacy servers. It had been a question at many BlizzCons. In fact, the most famous quote about <laughs> the legacy server movement happened do. at a BlizzCon. I'm sure you remember this. Have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. No. And, and by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. You think you do, but you don't. Words uttered at the 2013 BlizzCon, a full three years prior to Nostalrius' shutdown, that proved those words false. Now, why am I bringing up you think you do, but you don't? It's been a well-beaten horse for a long time that Jay Allen was wrong about this. Well, it just proves a little bit about how we were feeling as a community, that Blizzard wasn't hearing us. And here we have Nostalrius with its millions of characters that don't officially fully have a home to play on. And it was time 
for Blizzard to step up. So we created a petition on change.org that ended up having 279,000 people sign, I sign that. as a letter to Mike Morheim and Blizzard Entertainment asking them to again revisit the idea of legacy servers and start investing the resources that we knew Blizzard had into creating these original versions of the best MMO that's ever existed. Remarkably, and to Blizzard's credit, they stepped up. They invited the Nostal Race team to go to their Blizzard headquarters, to their corporate executive boardroom, and to give a present. There it is, dude. Is that Ian? <laughs> dude, I fucking... This picture is incredible. Everyone from Nost is wearing a, sh a shirt. Ian's just in a fucking t-shirt. Jay's wearing a shirt that looks way, way too unbuttoned. Is that Mike Morheim in a Blizzard shirt as well? This dude's wearing shorts! Is that Tom Chilton? <laughs> was, this, was this like a Saturday afternoon or something? What the fuck? Presentation on our server and why legacy servers deserved more attention from them. And so we did. A few months later in June of 2016, the Nostarius team headed over to Blizzard headquarters and surprising fashion i mean let's be real what dudes in 2016 weren't jamming to Katy perry all the time true right? it's just yeah, i mean everybody did anyway it's not wrong we met with the most important people we could have possibly met with to discuss legacy service with we talked with mike morheim jalen brack tom chilton at the time game director for wow Ian Hazakostis, at the time Associate Game Director for WoW, now Current Game Director for WoW, as well as the Technical Director, the Global PR Manager, and numerous other people at Blizzard Entertainment that had a vested interest in seeing what we had to say about legacy servers. So we had our meeting, and everything would be great, right? Blizzard's just gonna make classic servers, and done, right? <laughs> Not really. After that meeting, it was dead silence from Blizzard for quite a long time. In fact, Jay on Brack even wrote a letter prior to BlizzCon 2016 saying Blizzard was not going to talk about legacy servers at all at BlizzCon. And it left us feeling really defeated. We had invested oh, yeah, our heart and soul that. in this meeting. And we had gotten really good feedback while we were there. But after we left, we heard nothing from Blizzard for months even after a continued reach out. And so what were we supposed to do at that point? Were we just supposed to let the... Didn't you run... Uh, if I remember rightly, didn't they... I swear they had like a date where they brought back the server or something. Legacy server die? Is the dream dead? Well, we took things into our own hands and that's when the Elysium project happened. There you go. So we released the server code for the entire Nostalrius project to... Elysium team, including the player databases for both of our servers. And, you know, I'm not going to go into the details of the Elysium project, Light's Hope, the whole private server history. I'm not going to go into that. That's a story for somebody else to tell at another time. But what I will talk about for the first time ever publicly is about the legal heat that the Nostal Race team faced from Blizzard for partnering with the Elysium project and releasing our code into the wild. Spicy. I personally had a private investigator hired to track me down by a legal firm that represents Blizzard. He called numerous people in my life, including my employer, my owner of my company, to confirm information about me so he could serve me papers at 10 p.m. on a Wednesday night, slamming and knocking on the door, freaking the crap out of my wife, and waking up my baby daughter in the next room. The amount of pressure that Blizzard put on the Nostarius team was immense. They tried to have us roll everything back, try to steal everything back from the Elysium project if possible. They did not want Pandora's box to be opened. They felt the Elysium project having the Nostarius core and the number of players that were invested in that was opening Pandora's box. Now, what we didn't know behind the scenes is that Blizzard actually was starting to work on Classic at this point, and they were protecting their IP in a significant way because they were planning to have Classic be a legit game service that they were going to provide, so they want to protect it more so than ever. 
but what we felt was big bad blizzard coming down, bearing down on our necks, ready to chop us because we were getting in the way uh, and we were causing problems. And so the whole story of the Elysian Project the being the heir apparent from the Stalrius and the Stalrius taking away the seal of approval and that whole mess that caused a lot of drama, a lot of hatred towards me, towards the Stalrius Project in general, this is a little bit more context for you. Now, you might say it's just a threat. Cease and desist orders happen all the time. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to go in legal jeopardy. That's something for you to decide when that happens to you. But when it happened to me, I look at my wife, I look at my daughter, I look at my job, and I look at my resources, which weren't that many. Um, it wasn't worth it for me. And so we pulled away from the Elysium Project in a big way. And we tried to salvage what we could. We, made, we played nice with Blizzard. And the rest is history. So after that, that was basically the end of the Nostalgia's project. Um, the five of us each kind of went our separate ways. Damon and Viper disappeared um, into oblivion, essentially. <laughs> Just disappeared. Um, Tyrael and Ithlian, I think, still play together today, which is great. And I went on my own way. I, I pulled back from <laughs> disappeared. the Wild Private Scene pretty heavily. I don't... I, told my girl I was going to quit playing for now because my wife didn't want me to associate with it at all, which is reasonable given the fact that a private investigator banged on his, her door the, two days before Christmas. Um, nice. And yeah, it was a dark period um, for the classic WoW scene. But then something pretty incredible happened. I want to take a minute. And I want to talk about... I was actually uh, in the crowd for this, by the way. Yeah, I was actually... Uh, I was actually... So, to his left, I was on the uh, on the front row. Kind of way over to the left, but... Man. I've been to WrestleMania. I've been to WrestleMania. I've been to two WrestleManias. I've been to several BlizzCons. This is, like... The biggest, the fucking loudest crowd noise. Actually, nah, probably second loudest, actually. I think WrestleMania 33 Hardy Boys Return was probably the loudest noise I've ever heard. Uh, but this was, this was something. Ice cream. All right, so I'm going to stop here. I'm going to give you some context for where I'm at. I'm sitting in a Starbucks in between my work and my home where I would do some office work outside of my actual office because I have a sales job and I drive around and all that kind of stuff. So I'm watching BlizzCon in a Starbucks with my headphones in, and this dude says ice cream. And I start freaking out. Ice cream is great. Ice cream is one of my favorite desserts. Personally... I love chocolate, and I love cookies and cream. Cookies and cream is actually my all-time favorite dessert. But I stand, understand that for some of you, your favorite flavor to be is, pistachio. is vanilla. It's a grown man sitting in a Starbucks watching an international convention for a video game company and he starts crying because some dude who he used to really not like said vanilla. And this is kind of where I wanted oh. to land. Because why would a grown man cry about a video game coming out? It doesn't make any sense, yeah, especially the one that's fun. already come out. Why am I having such a visceral, emotional reaction to this game? And I think it's because... This game for many of us has been life for a long time. Some of my best friends in life I met in Azeroth, in World of Warcraft, the original version, and I still have them today. I'm still raiding with a number of them. Today in Classic that I raided Naxxramas with in 2005. It's insane the amount of relationships we can build in this world and I just wanted to have it back. And we got it back. 
Now, whether it was the same as it was back then is a whole different video, and maybe we'll get into that soon. But, man, I'm glad that Blizzard made Classic. It's been an incredible experience. And this story has been really cool. And it's not going to end here either. TBC is coming and new stories are going to be told. And I'm excited to do those as well. But I just want to take some time as we make this transition from classic to TBC that I get to tell this story finally for the first time of my experience being on the front lines of pushing for classic to begin with. And I wanted to also say thank you. If you're watching this, if hey. you've watched any in the Stalrius, if you've played in the Stalrius, if you've signed the petition even if you didn't do any of those and thought that we were fools i just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this story of mine but also to be a part of this community of world of warcraft and what it can mean to people so thanks for coming with me on the story um and learning a little bit more about this background in the stars about me and uh i look forward to talking to you guys more soon See ya. But he didn't tell me to like and subscribe the video. How am I going to... Hey, so I normally end the video here, but I just want to say thanks again for watching. I This is the first YouTube content I've ever created. I think as of right now, I Post have one team. subscriber on YouTube. Um, so if anybody checks this out, I really appreciate it. Uh, what I'd really love for you to do, you can like it, you can subscribe. That's... That, that would be great. But if you could comment down below and give me some feedback, I would really love some constructive criticism, how I can make this better. I would have been really hesitant to create any content for a long time because I've been really nervous about how Aww. it's going to be received. Uh, and I want everything that I put out to be of really good quality. So I would love to hear your feedback. Let me know how you would improve the video. Comment down below. And if you want to subscribe and see the next one, that would be great. Um, so if you want more classic content, it's going to come. Uh, I'm not sure how quickly, but I want to make some videos and, and talk to you about how I'm thinking about classic and, and how we're moving to TBC. So thanks guys. Comment down below and I'll see you in the next one. How about that boys? Dude, that was a fantastic fucking video, man. That was a absolutely boys. I want everybody right now, everybody 166 of you right now to go over to this video, like the shit out of it, leave a comment, tell them what you thought and, uh, and subscribe to nano. Uh, Nano was a good friend of mine. Met him at a event in Las Vegas of all places. It was great, man. That was actually like for the first fucking video. <laughs> Compare that to my first video, man. Like that was a uh, that was an absolute incredible, uh, incredible video. All right, what should we write? Uh, great video. Um, love the story. I, th I honestly thought it was a fantastic fucking video. Like the way it was put together. Wanted that to do. Like the editing and everything. Like it didn't need to be. It didn't need to be like overly like produced, right? I, I think it was like absolutely perfect for what was told. And uh, yeah, that that's kind of where I'm at. Like I don't know. I think it was a. I think it was a good fucking video.